Oh, I like Glenn. He's really uh, All right, a so clever guy. Welcome, everybody, to the Java 20th anniversary panel at the JFocus conference. We are joined by an elite panel of folks who have lived the last 20 years of Java, and they're going to share some of the forgotten bites, things of years of Java past where we we probably all forgotten about them themselves. So we, we of course, um, <clears throat> are equipped with a memory aid, which is going to help us remember some of the some of the events of the past, or at least loosen our <laughs> our ability to talk about them. And to begin with, I'd like to introduce my panel members, or have them introduce themselves. So Arun, please. All right. So uh, my name is Arun Gupta. I joined well, I joined Sun back in '99. And I was a classic case where I applied on sun.com slash jobs. Wow. And my hiring manager said, hey, you know, you want to work on the JDK team? I was like, you want to work in the Corba team? I was like, and I was like, yeah, hire me, man. And that's how I got hired at Sun. All right. So uh, my name is Garrett Grumwald, and I'm, I'm not working that long for Oracle now. <laughs> it's nearly six months now. And uh, yeah, I started with Java just on a private idea because I thought it would be a good idea to have one language on different operating systems so using Windows and Mac and so I was looking for something where I can use Java uh, where I can use the language on all these platforms and that's the way I came to Java in the early days. Nice. You don't need that Kirk. Get that back. <laughs> yeah. Back, back. All yeah. oh, right. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. This is uh, this works. I forgot. Oh, okay, so um, I'm Kirk Pepperdine, and um, I came to Java in 1997, um, thinking that I was going to a small talk uh, project, and yeah, it turned out to be. Yeah, weren't you surprised? I was very surprised. <laughs> it, it gets better than this, right? Because uh, they said, "No, you must tool up for Java," and about a week into my tooling up, they said, "Okay, now you must go to this big important client because we're getting rid of our Java consultant because he doesn't have enough experience." He's only been doing Java for one year. And that's after five days of sitting doing Java. So that was my initiation by fire. Does anyone ever come to you and say you're not experienced enough, Kirk? Sorry? Um, no, no one ever no. comes to me. No, OK, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so my, I actually I started with Java around 97 as well, except I was coming from Dylan. You're, does anyone? No. No. What? OK. So it was a language developed by Apple as an open source language. And I was on a DARPA research project. We were rebuilding a full compiler and interpreter. It's, it's a you're, you're responsible for the internet then? No, no, that's Al Gore, but okay. that's another right. story. <laughs> but anyway, you know, years later, I'm still stuck on Java. And it's, it's nothing like Dylan. It's nothing like Smalltalk. Well, it's getting there. Oh, oh, are we, are we, we're, we're not starting this quite yet. Let's let through. Yeah. Then you can start throwing the hurdles. <laughs> All right, Tony. Hi, I'm Tony Apple. And I started with Java um, in order to introduce some dynamics to uh, websites using applets, which was a really hot thing back then. And, um, well, I'm using it since then. And uh, I, I fought, uh, fought some fights with it, but I'm still <laughs> very happy. <laughs> I'm James Weaver, and uh, I began using Java in 1995 when it was Alpha 3. I was looking for a way to implement mobile agents, which were popular at the time. The idea of being able to have a common virtual machine that these mobile agents could move from one place to another. Uh, turns out we now call these viruses, but I was very <laughs> interested in that uh, field of study. And so that's what attracted me to Java. Cool. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go around, and this is like a round table sharing. We won't quite do a beer chugging thing, but you're welcome to chug as much beer as you want along. And we're going to uncover some of the um, relics of the last 20 years of Java, since this is the um, you know, 20th anniversary. So you, you were, you were going to cut us off earlier, Kirk, but I, I think you have something you want to share. Right. So I have this wonderful book here written by uh, Bruce Tate. And um, he's a very clever guy, I have a lot of respect for him. But he did, in 2005, 
write this book, you want to say the name of this? Uh... Beyond Java. Beyond Java. It was written in 2005. I don't know, I've got to read the subtext. A glimpse at the future of programming languages. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it was an epiphany that Bruce had when he started uh, using uh, Ruby. I don't know if his, uh, Charlie is around uh, the room here. So can we can, so we can say whatever we want about Ruby, right? Pr pretty much. He'll jump up on stage and get us if he wants to. He's not shy. Exactly. So, you know. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, it was actually a wonderful book to read. And uh, at the time, it was really uh, a result of a lot of conversations we were, that we were having in the industry. You know, now that we've gotten what we need to get out of Java, what's beyond Java? As it turns out, what's beyond Java is... More Java. More Java. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, one of the things that we were looking at the book, for example, is <laughs> this book was written about 10 years ago, so 2005. Um, in that, there is a section called as the next big thing, okay? So let's see what was the production for the next big thing 10 years ago. Did you get there? There you okay. go. So if, if I get there, yeah, well, right here. Right, right there. Right there. So here it says, <clears throat> Java may need nothing more than a little overhaul. Maybe the problem is in the massively complex libraries and a few rewrites with some tweaks of the language would extend Java's leadership for 10 more years. So I guess even at that time, modularity was an unsolved problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. But yeah, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> the, the good news is, for example, here it also says, the JCP could suddenly start supporting the best existing frameworks based on experience instead of standardizing a good idea that was born in a committee. So with the JCP transparency, we have definitely come a long way. So it's both sort of a one-two punch in that sense. Yeah. yeah. So there we go. We, we hit one of them, not the other. Yeah. yeah. Modularity. Yeah. Mark, so, Mark um, would be proud. In, in 2005, it was a very controversial book. Um, it, uh, I, I uh, published a little bit, um, ghostwriting for someone, on uh, the server side. And to date, there is no other forum that has generated as much controversy as this book did. Nice. It's a very well-written book. All right. Bruce. Here's to Bruce Tate. Here's to Bruce. Thank you very much. All right, who's up next? Jim, you, you want the mic. So we're making a drinking game out of this? No, you, it's it? optional. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, do you have a picture of the Hot Java browser or no? Um, Hot Java, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> so this was in about 1995 uh, when, uh, when Java was in Alpha 3. And the Hot Java browser was being developed by Sun about the same time that Mark Andreessen and others were developing Mosaic. Uh, I believe at the University of let's let's where where was Mark Andreessen at the University of? Well, sorry, you don't know. It was in it was in Illinois somewhere, and so the Mosaic, which later kind of became Netscape. Uh, dealt with initially with static content, rendering HTML and, and other kinds of static HTML. Hot Java, its, uh, um, its promise was to be able to embed a protocol rather than just HTTP or HTTPS, if it was around at that time. Uh, you could embed other, use other protocols that would then define the type of application that would, that would come exist in your browser, and then it would know how to deal with the data that was pointed to by the URI. And so it was, it was way ahead of its time. It was a great concept, and, uh, and parts of that are in use today in, in other forms. Uh, but that was uh, one of my first memories of, uh, of Java outside the mobile agents. Hot Java. Hot Java. You, you, you want to add, Tony? Uh, we, we were waiting basically for a long time for it to return because everybody wanted to uh, have HTML rendering back then. In, and it took a really long time until JavaFX brought it to us <laughs> again. <laughs> and and, and uh, during that time, we had to fight with J-Editor pain in Swing yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there were some very bad attempts at HTML <laughs> yeah. and Java. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we can have a client lamentation story for quite a time, while here. 
All right, so who's next? Oh, can I check the, the, the sunspots? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, right. out comes, out comes yeah. the some very old mobile well, technology. I, I don't know if you, if you know this stuff, Here, just which the is uh, the sunspots. Yeah, and that was, uh, especially today with all the IoT stuff going on, this stuff was <coughs> out in, I think, 2005, so 10 years ago. And it, it was way ahead of time. And um, these are the ones from Kirk, but I have 10 of those at home, and I bought the first one private no camera. for around 600 euros. It was very expensive, but you said 600, 600 euros? euros? Yeah, it was in Whoa. Germany. It was very hard to get this stuff. So, um, and when I got them, I was so proud that I can use Java These just on that device. showed up in the mail. <laughs> well, One day you, I opened my mailbox, and all of a sudden, no, no, boom, for me, there it was they were. different story. They were quite fun. You, know, you can do the, all the, kinds the, of games. The nice thing is, it's based on an ARM processor, and it uh, it com it completely runs on Java. So, the, the operating system is a Java ME like. Uh, JVM running on that stuff and you can do IOT things in 2005 and when I, I used that in, a, in our company <laughs> in a semiconductor industry in a tool to measure temperatures and all that stuff because it has mesh networking and all the things that are so hyped today but at that time it was like ah oh, come on we can do other stuff it's not that important so uh, unfortunately it didn't really make it but I they, still love it. It's they great. were using this for monitoring earthquake zones and things like that yeah, to see how much the ground was moving. It, it's, so they were being used in quite it's a few still, places. It's still great. So you yeah. can still program for that stuff. It's it's awesome. It would have worked. I would have had a demo, but I just didn't get <laughs> enough. <laughs> no, had, right. no, it's, I didn't get enough uh, notice ahead of time. Otherwise, you could still get these things to work easily. Yeah. They're really fun. So you have a picture of it. Maybe. Uh, he's been looking, Steve's here looking for a picture, but... Uh, ah, yes, yeah, here you go. There you go. So it, it came with a lot of sensors inbuilt and with the LEDs and with nice demos, and that was really, really nice. And like I said, 10 years ago, so before all the IoT happened. So this is like the, the precursor to the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's fun so stuff. Let me show something that is a precursor to a precursor, so to say. You know, in the world of IoT, we talk about all the time smaller devices, all right? So here is one device, um, is iButton, okay? This was actually meant to be a necklace. People could wear this necklace, and there is Java running on this guy. You could actually program it. It's a small, tiny JVM running on this guy. So you could actually do a IoT programming. This is going back literally circa 2000, 99, 2000 time frame. So that's one example. The other proud example in that sense is, which became very popular and it was, a, it was a quite a relic, is the Java ring. Now this is actually a finger, the ring that you can wear in your finger. And it's got pretty nice, if you see the picture over there, it's got a nice sun logo. Um, on the top it would say actually, you know, the Java, uh, old Java soft logo, for example. And again, there is Java running in this guy. So this is again going back to circa 99, 2000. So, so one of my buddies is into home automation. He built an entire home automation platform. Um, he uses the Java button to gain secure entry into his house. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, Today? I mean, yeah. The, the IoT home automation is becoming a fad now. Yeah. No, like it's like, it's, it's like a, you know, classic old school doorknob for the IoT age. Yeah. <laughs> and see, the, the, the weird part about this is it's hard to guess. This was actually by Hewlett Packard, this I button at that time. Well, HP used to be a big player, so this is by I button in that sense. So I button and uh, Java Ring are two of my favorite relics, and I got a lot more to show, which we'll talk about as we move along. I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. It's quite a relic. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's awesome. So that's really something. Awesome. All right, so that was a good one around. <laughs> Who's up next? You. Oh, me? <laughs> huh. I didn't actually prepare anything. You didn't prepare anything. Let's go to let's go to Gosling's car here. Up there. Sorry, Neil Young's car. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Kirk. <laughs> you see good that? Good save. Good save. Right. So what, what, what is this car? <laughs> that is the, uh, as, I guess as Gosling has uh, described this, is, this is the biggest, fattest, 
meanest, ugliest Detroit uh, built car that um, Neil Young could find, and he converted it into a complete electric vehicle. All of the controls in here are uh, all in Java. This, is, this picture actually isn't that old. It's like uh, 2007, 2008. But um, the team inside the car is actually the guys who uh, built all of the controls for this particular car. So, um, and Neil is missing from the car. He was in it the previous year. But, uh, <laughs> but you can see uh, there's a uh, nice stern picture of James sitting in the front seat for the camera there yeah. in, the, in the upper corner. Yeah, that's a, that's a Motley family. This thing, apparently, according to James, hauls ass. It goes very fast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Very good. And, uh, well, you're right. supposed to be Mr. What are you going to say? What do you say? I was going to say, he's supposed to be Mr. J-E-E, -E, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, let's talk about J.E. -E. Uh, you know what? Don't say that in front of Bill Shannon. He's going to kill you, man. <laughs> Why? We don't call it J.E. -E. There is no such thing as J.E. -E. G. Well, uh, if you, well, okay, hold on. There is something called as J.E. -E if you're a spring fanboy. If you're a spring fanboy, you can call it whatever you want. Because you're going to buy Barney Stinson theory of Ewox, you'll call it whatever you want to call it. Well, I don't know. Spring fanboy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, this is a fanboy, right? It's like, you know, they took a technique that we've been using in small talk for like years and they built a $450 million company around it and a product that everybody uses. Like, you know, that's incredible. You're scratching your heads going like, <laughs> on bike code injection, you built a $450 million company? Awesome. <laughs> Way to go. So, uh, t talk about JEE. I got something very unique to show. Ooh. I hold the mic. Yeah, yeah. Please hold the mic. So, I think I've seen this well, before. Let me, let me talk about it. Now, I joined Sun Microsystems in April, March of 1999. This is like before J2E first release was done. Now, in April of 1999, we had the very first release of J2EE 1.2. No, and you didn't. Well, we did. No, you didn't. I have the proof right here. You can date these CDs. This is the first J2E application server. And right here on this CD is the first Java application server. It was pre-J2EE. Pre <laughs> Tell me the date on the uh, J2EE compliant application server. And this would be 19, uh, this was uh, for the, the spec number is 0 0.072. That, that's not J2EE compliant in that case, for JCP rules. Uh, Don't pick me on those, buddy. I have lived those uh, rules by the <laughs> Yeah, you're just trying to do one-upmanship here. <laughs> I got them right here, buddy. Yeah, well, I, Read them and weep. I got a better proof here, right here. <laughs> so as part of the alpha <clears throat> release, so to say, of J2E 1.2, they gave out a custom embroidered shirt to each member of the team. All Sun right? marketing propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> so I got one of those shirts, which is with me, and I'm going to show you that here. And they're not even good at marketing, right? Uh, let me hold it up for the camera. You keep yeah, talking. Yeah. There you go. So you can see how big the shirt is. Uh, this is probably a double XL or XL. Um, well, that's how J2E was. Big, fat, <laughs> ugly, <laughs> heavyweight. And that used to be me. By the way, that's my shirt at that point of time. But I used to be about close to 200 pounds. Um, over a period of time, of course, you know, Java EE has trimmed down. It's pretty slick, pretty modern, pretty fast. You know, I, I'm a runner, I like to keep my platform fast, so <laughs> here comes Java E7, you know, it can beat any platform head on. All so right. I think this is one of my relics, and this is from 99 April. So I think, I think you have a, a future in, in infomercials before and after <laughs> photos. <laughs> yeah, who's the biggest loser? <laughs> it's the biggest loser. <clears throat> All right, very good, Arun. So Kirk, you, you had a few more good ones for us. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh right, right. Now, here's something that every geek has to have in their living room, right? It's like the, you, you, you have one of these too, right? It's like the, um, the Java coffee table book. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen this thing. It's like really wild. So Java, yes, Java has a coffee table book. It's, it's got like full glossy pictures in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you're showing that, that one up there. It's, isn't this like, you know? Don't, Our cameraman's on strike. We don't, Sorry, we don't have we don't have a 20 year coffee table book. This is like really disappointing. What's going on? Yeah, with that? I'll talk to Michelle Kalvek about that. <laughs> right, exactly. 
It's but amazing. So, there is a story that goes with it because this book was produced at the 10th anniversary of Java. And at that point of time, we were still in the Cupertino campus back in California. So there was an email that was sent out to the Java team at that point of time that if you want your name to be included in the book, send an email to so-and-so person. And people who are in the Java team, so you will see their names, you know, at least who replied back to the email. So if you happen to have that book, as I was saying, Corp, my name is in the book. Because I've always been with the Java team while I was at Sun. So, but this is quite a relic as well. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> that, 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 by, by the way, that paid for my mortgage. Just kidding. <laughs> this book? You made money with a tech book? Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> You're impressive, better than I thought. Excellent. <laughs> okay, hooked on Java. There, now I'm back on. Okay, so like Jim, on phonics if you something. want to talk about this one, just um, go with it, and I'll pop it up on screen in a sec. Okay. So um, back in 96, I think, um, when um, the original AWT team uh, w was creating the, the original API, uh, people like Arthur Van Hoff and Sammy Shaw and, and, uh, and others, uh, of course, James Gosling, um, Arthur Van Hoff uh, wrote, I think he was the lead author on this book, called Hooked on Java. And so this was the first Java book that I ever purchased. I'm not sure whether it was the first book or not, whether it preceded the spec, the Java spec or not. But this is my first uh, Java book and, and kind of uh, helped get me excited about the future so, of Java. So did you, did you keep the CD-ROM that came in the book? Because that, no. that's probably priceless now. Probably is. I, <laughs> yeah. I actually um, I, uh, lost the book. So uh, I may you know have that, to order that another CD one. CD-ROM includes sample so applets you... ready to plug into your home page. Right. But some mm. of those same <laughs> apps, I think, are available right now um, in updated form, like uh, you know the cro the uh, tic-tac-toe, et cetera. So, so yeah, I think they're actually available in, in, in JDK 8. Nice. So, uh, Steve, if you want to show that image one more time. That was pre-spec, so you're <laughs> going to say it's not a Java book, right? <laughs> no, no, no. There you go. So, uh, Gerrit and I were talking. On the left side, if you see, it says, creating hot websites using Java applets. When I look at the hot websites, and I think about pornography, <laughs> I was wondering if that was the intention for creating this website. Hey, how do you can create pornography websites using Java yeah. that many years ago? <laughs> Maybe they need a good technical or a good editor on the book as well. I think, th I think they made a typo. Maybe that was like hookers on Java? Or, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're, you're insulting, Duke. <clears throat> All right. Speaking of Duke, what what are these Duke pictures? Uh, oh, oh God! Them. What are yeah. these Dukes? So, um, back in the old Sundays, you know, we would like give out these quarterly awards. Somebody who has gone above and beyond on what they are doing for Java. Either I mean, this is like literally going back to early 2000s, where conference talking or speaking at a jug or blogging was not that prominent, or you know, answering forums was not that uh, prominent. So if anybody who will do something spectacular where, oh, you know what? He answered five questions on the forum this week. There you go, Duke Choice Award. So they would actually hand out those Duke Choice Awards for or you build something very cool, like using Java. So they will hand out those Duke Choice Awards. So these are the two that from my prize possession that I happen to get. And I don't even recall. So you're, you're a Duke's Choice Award winner. I'm a Duke's Choice Award winner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the choice was happens to be the management's choice instead of the community <laughs> choice. <laughs> Good. I'm glad we've evolved in a positive direction yeah. on that one. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Two-time Duke's Choice Award winner. Good job, Rune. What did you say, Baruch? Just like J-Frog. Just like J-Frog. Two-time winner. Yes, all right. Yeah, right, right. We, we will give you your just desserts tomorrow at your interview. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have those two guys ready for you. You give me back the big awards you got. Okay, so Kirk, you got a few more good ones here. Which one do you um, want? <clears throat> that one? Yeah, why not? 
Um, so uh, these are some pre-sketches we had done for um, uh, using Duke as, a, as my um, background for my slide drop. So I, you know, since I do a lot of educational stuff, I figured I wanted to do something interesting. So I, uh, what do you got there? Yeah, that's it. So the one on the left is sort of like uh, what I call Duke Rodin style. Uh, that's before we had him sitting on a monitor. And the uh, one on the, uh, uh, the one on the, on your right, I guess, is going to be uh, just thinking Duke. And, and if you've seen any of my presentations, you've probably seen the uh, one that we have integrated into the chalkboard. Uh, but the, uh, Duke is kind of interesting. It's, he's open, he's Creative Commons, open sourced. So you can take the sim this symbol, it's a symbol of our community, and you can do things with it and contribute it back to the community if you like. In this case, um, I know a number of speakers have started using um, variations of this uh, particular uh, image in their uh, presentations, and so, uh, you know. That's the origin. You can download it and have fun with it if you like, you know. Cool. We've done other things with it. We've put uh, snorkeling masks and scuba gear, and, and uh, we've all had all kinds of fun with Duke, just dressing them up different ways. Anyways, yeah. I, I don't know when Duke originally came about. Do you know? When Duke that, he was the came. avatar for the, the avatar original for Green the original, Project. Yeah, the the, the yeah. Duke yeah. Champions ones, yeah. Or, yeah. or the uh, Rockstar Award. No, 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 the no. no, he was the avatar on the original. Oh, yeah, that Oak original, Cruise. yeah, the Oak, like a little embedded thing which got well, I mean, here's a question did. to the audience. Does anyone know the official release date for Java 1.0? Official release date. Well, I know the no. month of the year. You know the month? Month of the year. What's the, okay, month in the year. All okay, right, so we'll, year. Spi we'll spice it up. <laughs> For anyone who guesses the right year, you have a good range here, you get a prize. Um, who wants, who wants, who wants it? You're not going to tell them what the prize is? No, that would, that would discourage them. 95? Okay. Okay, anybody get the month now? <laughs> All right, so you, you win. Yeah. Nobody can get the month? It was March, right? I don't remember. March. March. Yes, March. March. May. 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 Oh, it started with an M, May. <laughs> yeah. March and May. Yeah, sounds May. similar. Yeah, okay. okay. Come up afterwards close, and I'll sir. give you a sticker. All right, no problem. Thanks, sir. All right, so Tony, <laughs> you got a good one. Lay it on us. Okay. What, what, what are these things in our covering uh, the, our faces? These things are basically uh, the, what I started with with Java, and that was a, a, one of the early uh, demos that shipped with Java with the JDK. And a lot of people use that as applets on the website. And um, actually, uh, who remembers MS JVM? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was it was really fun to support also the Microsoft Java virtual machine and we were really grateful for Sun uh, uh, to sue them <laughs> for this thing <laughs> and and to uh, to get get rid of that. So but, uh, Tony did, did you actually ever programmed in Visual J Sharp? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and we use that actually a, yeah. a lot uh, um, as, a, as a starting point, basically as a student for, for graph libraries and stuff like that. And, and I think this is one of the most used uh, pieces of, uh, reused pieces of code uh, for creating scientific software for a network uh, display. And I really enjoyed playing with that a lot. Nice. See, one of the things I want to share, share, which is probably okay to share now, like when Sun won the legal lawsuit against um, Microsoft, yeah. Sun is no, so no longer exists, so I can say this. <laughs> uh, when, when Sun actually won the legal lawsuit against Microsoft, Scott McNeely actually distributed the money that we got to all the employees. Wow. That money that we got as part of the lawsuit winning was distributed to all the employees. Well, of course, wow. the proportion were very different in terms of the minions and the masters. But it was distributed. Wow. So, all right. Once, cool. all this, once all this settles with the big G, we might be in for a big paycheck from Larry. Well, uh, knowing <laughs> Larry, I doubt. Wow. <laughs> we, see, we can hope. We can you hope. You see, that's why Sun is no more and Oracle still is, I that's guess. That's true. Yeah, I respect yeah. Oracle for that. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. So, so who remembers the Java 1 that they invited, the Scott Manili invited Dana Carvey to do a comedy routine in which uh, he purportedly paid Dana 
um, uh, extra money for every jab that he got into uh, into um, Bill but Gates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, we remember all of those. So, like, he would call it as dot not. He will call it as C flat. <laughs> So he, he was, I mean, like, that was one thing very characteristic about Scott McNeely. Whether he talked to him personal or he talked to him in a conference setting, he would just like one, two punch, always looking for, you know, how can I punch my, uh, Microsoft? What's this last, was that yours? It, yeah, it's, it's okay, it's just, it's a Java 1 artifact, right, of uh, hands-on lab. Um, there's a couple of barriers that uh, Heinz Kibbutz and I actually managed to uh, break down yeah. and that was, um, uh, being the first outside uh, of Sun people to actually put on hands-on labs in Java 1. Came in 2008 and we are actually the uh, first to be invited to uh, speak at uh, Sun Tech Days as like outside, outside speakers. And uh, that really opened the door to a lot of other people in the community being able to participate at a much higher level. Yeah, we should you know? really give a hands-on to, uh, hands-off to um, Voltaire and his team Yes. They do an astounding job at Java yeah. 1, yeah, where absolutely. none of these CDs, like, none of this is required. You know, even for the DevOps for Kids Day that we had at Java 1 last year, they did an astounding lab setup. It just works absolutely. out of the box. It's a lot of effort that goes in setting up those machines so that attendees have a pleasant experience, and it's a lot of legwork. So really hats off to them. Yeah, I know, I know we had to do a lot of extra work, and there was no infrastructure to support us from being outside Sun, so we had to work with people inside Sun, which means we had to go, uh, I think I had to travel like 250 kilometers to get to a center where I could actually upload the code for the lab, <laughs> right? Because there was no other way for me to upload the code uh, yeah. to the lab, but I had to be in a Sun office someplace. Yeah. And since I live in the middle of, well, I have to drive to get the middle of nowhere from where I live, <laughs> um, it, was, it, was, it was an interesting time, that's all, that's good. So, just in closing, do you guys have anything else? I have one more. I have one that you got one more? Two more, actually. Two more. Two more. Two more. All right. Okay. Which, two more. Lay it on us, Arun. So there's one with the badges. The ba Oh, okay. This one. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Nice. Now, <laughs> those are those some are of cool. the very unique badges that were given out um, at different times of the Java time zone. So the first one on the top left, what you see is for the 10th birthday of Java 1. So people typically would attach that badge to their bag. Hey, I'm, I participated in the 10th birthday of Java. Mm. So that's that. Um, on the top right, if you see that blue you know, oval kind of thing, that's one of the first conferences I attended. This is back in literally 99 December, Java Business Expo, which turned out to be Web 2.0 Expo, then became the Ajax world, and kind of kept yeah. got involved. So this was a badge from that. You can see a badge from Java 1 2003, and the one on the bottom are the five-year anniversary and a 10-year anniversary pins that were given to employees when they were completing that many years at Sun. So these are, again, some of the relics, and this would only be available to people who were working at Sun, for example, at least the anniversary badges. So some are pretty unique in that sense. Nice. Nice. You, you, I, I know you also have the biggest collection of conference badges. I do actually, in the world yeah, as about well. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, if you travel 300,000 miles in a year and you go around the world like, yeah. so many times, you do collect that badges. Yeah, don't remind me how much we travel. <laughs> okay, and you, you had a second one too. I got one more. So, uh, I've seen this before. Th th there is no picture for this one. Um, now, yeah. this is um, Here, hold on. a hold blower, for? for example. Um, this was given out when JDK 1.3 was released. Oh. And I, I'll show you. Uh, give me a second here. So, so what you can do is you can actually blow yeah. a whistle out of this. So this was again given to everybody who worked on the JDK 1.3 team. And once it was given up, so effectively what you can do is you can blow a whistle out of this. So if I can take it, let's see if I can still play it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it was supposed to be a whistleblower that move aside, JDK 1.3 is coming. So this was given to every yeah, member. The office must have been horrible to be in, to work in. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh. I mean, there are a lot of goodies like this that goes way back to 
JDK 1.2, 1.1 days, you know, notepads and stuff like that. Uh, oh I, since having worked in the JDK team, I got a lot of goodies like this. And they do go in as part of my precious possession. Okay. You ready? Anything else? Anything else to add? No, I just say, um, I, all I can add is that, you know, Sun has been, a, was a wonderfully innovative company. Uh, you know, they, they didn't just innovate uh, with Java, they innovated with hardware. Um, I know in um, 90, in the, in the early 90s, we were building supercomputer clusters out of uh, Sun Force boards, and um, unfortunately, Microsoft and Intel came along and basically killed all of these uh, types of efforts on us, but, uh, you know, prior to that, we were really having fun working with all of the innovation and, and uh, products that were coming yeah, out of Yeah, no, Sun. I think it's, it's hard to talk about Java without talking about innovation. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, it's really moved forward the technology industry. You know, from a small talk sense, we're all weeping because we're going like, what the hell is this? But I think from, uh, from an industry point of view, it has really worked out to be uh, something that has driven innovation yeah. in places that I don't think any other language was really in a position to do. Okay, so we've been talking about the history of Java and some of the, the great moments. Some we remember, <coughs> some are forgotten. But I think what we're really here to celebrate is 20 years of Java with a really bright future. We're all here at the JFocus conference working on Java technology and helping to make the future. So help us in the audience to have a big round of applause. What's it? Um, Skull for Java. Skull for Java. Skull. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, and have a great evening here at JFocus.